Hi, this is Joe Bruzak from Cars.com. Land Rover has introduced some compelling models over the past few years, including the Evoque and the new Land Rover Range Rover. The 2013 LR2 is also redesigned for 2013, and they're trying to capture some of the Evoque's momentum with this new model, including a shared engine and some new technology from the Evoque on the inside. But is the LR2 too far outdated to keep that momentum going? Despite having a ton of ground clearance and maintaining its off-road capabilities, the LR2 drives very car-like, and that's helped by the 240 horsepower turbocharged four-cylinder. Now that's shared with the Evoque, and the engine has great acceleration in this car. Gas mileage is improved compared to the previous six-cylinder engine, but it's still not too impressive. You're looking at 20 miles per gallon combined with the standard all-wheel drive. Now that's not exactly the best in the segment. The BMW X3 has great gas mileage, 24 miles per gallon combined, and the LR2's gas mileage isn't even as great as the Evoque, which is 23 miles per gallon combined. The driving is practically flawless except for lag that happens from a standstill when you really need to get out into traffic quickly. You can mash the accelerator to the floor and there is a lot of hesitation between hitting the accelerator and actually going. It's not noticeable once you're driving. The six-speed automatic transmission is pretty good at downshifting, but that noticeable hesitation is really off-putting, especially when you need to get out into traffic quickly. The LR2 starts at around $37,000 with destination. Now at that price, the interior doesn't have the niceness as some of its competitors, like the Volvo XC60, the Cadillac SRX, or the BMW X. Now, at that price, what you get are the turbocharged four-cylinder, the automatic transmission, all-wheel drive, leather, and a panoramic sunroof. Perhaps most offensive is the LR2's plastic interior. Now, plastic can be done well. It can look good. It can have good material quality and texture. This is not done very well, and it's most apparent in this center cluster area. Now, there are some soft touch materials like on the armrest, but they're very thinly padded and they're not very comfortable to rest your elbow on longer drives. Now, all is not lost. What the Land Rover LR2 gained for 2013 is this seven inch touchscreen from the Evoque. And it works really nicely. The graphics are good. Uh, it, it works as you would expect and it's easy to use. And also, in the LR2, the seating position is really high, and the windows are tall, so you have great visibility all the way around. You don't get that in a lot of small SUVs, but you have very good visibility in the LR2. The LR2's heated windshield is a feature that we are not a fan of, and it's in a lot of Land Rovers. The defrosters that run vertical up and down the windshield are extremely distracting and create halos around stoplights and bright lights at night. It's, it's extremely distracting. And the thing is, it is paired with the heated seats. So if you want heated seats, you have to get this windshield and shell out $1,000. The LR2 is on the smaller side in the compact luxury SUV segment, and that's most notable in the back seat and the cargo area. I'm pretty comfortable back here, and that's with the driver's seat where I would drive, but I don't have a lot of extra room. The cargo area has plastic moldings that kind of intrude on the width of the rear cargo. In addition, there is no power lift gate, even optional on the LR2. And this, as equipped, is a $44,000 SUV. We recently tested $38,000 midsize SUVs and almost every single one had a power lift gate. It's a glaring omission in the LR2. Now the folding rear seat, this is a pretty common way they did years ago, and some still do. Now, if you just fold the seat like this, it's at an angle, it's not completely flat. So to fold it completely flat, the headrest have to come off and then with the headrest off you can flip up the bottom cushion and now you have a flat folding cargo area but not without a little work first. Well there's a lot to like in how the Land Rover LR2 drives that signature Land Rover luxuriousness just 
isn't there in the LR2. And at $45,000 as tested, you can find that luxury in a lot of other cars, including Land Rover's own Evoque.